Okay, before I start this video, I'm gonna be talking about content in which somebody takes their own life. And I just want to encourage you to get to know yourself and give yourself some time to breathe before you decide to do something that you might regret later in your life, okay? With that being said, what the f Vice, seriously, what's your problem? His bread and butter are top 40 covers and goth reacts to viral videos. The fact that anyone would buy tears from Richie Geis, whose fame peaked oh, in 2018 so thanks to a culturally insensitive headdress, amazes me. Make Cold tears via USPS are the next best soul. thing. Look, Thank I you for supporting me, but that's it. not my I, 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 yeah, I don't, I don't like. So, about a year ago, Vice, yes, THE Vice, I know, I was so excited, oh my goodness, a real, a real publication wants, wants to hear my story? I finally get to say my side of the story on an independent news outlet where people can look at me fairly and honestly? <laughs> you thought. So when I was originally contacted by Vice, I, like most people, haven't watched their content in about a decade, because in my brain, Vice was this cutting edge, progressive, say it like it is, journalism. When the journalist from Vice emailed me, I imagined him surrounded by 10 starving children in some war-torn country I've never heard of, writing up a very cutting edge piece of media that shows the Western world what we're missing and what we need to know what's going on. That was, that was like 2010 Vice. That is not, that is not now. That is, that is very far from now. Current day Vice reminds me a lot of Buzzfeed, which is essentially a content factory and whatever is viral, they will make. There is very little ethics. Uh, it is not journalism, it is all sensational and they will literally do anything for clicks, much like uh, YouTubers, including myself. <laughs> I did genuinely believe that talking to Vice would give me a voice outside of this channel and I'd be able to tell my story, attempt to get my details across, and maybe clear up some of the misinformation going around over the years because believe me, the past few years when this thing first happened, people generally understood the situation even though it is dark, it is worst case scenario for any content creator. But as the years have gone on, and as people have liked me less, I've noticed the narrative shift. Um, and it's not, it's not good. <laughs> the fan that showed up to my house over a joke that I made in a video. If you make it out here, I will congratulate you and give you a glass of milk. And then nine months later, she took her life. And it is being packaged and sold as that, and I feel like the whole story is disingenuous towards me, it is disingenuous towards Arlene, and I'd like to talk about it. So first off, when the Vice crew came to my house and started interviewing me, as I said, it was over two days of shooting. They got over three hours of interview footage, plus many more hours of just around the house. I didn't know they were going to film the entirety of my house, otherwise I would have cleaned up, but I digress. But when I saw the finished video, or at least my segment in the docu-series, it, it's very apparent that they had an angle going into it. They really wanted to see me as this cold, calculating YouTuber, and I gave them exactly what they wanted. And in the interview, or at least the handful of pieces that they used, and by that I mean less than 45 seconds of interview through three hours, but I guess that's just the way the cookie crumbles, I sounded indifferent and almost, almost angry that I'm talking about the Arlene thing. And people always accuse me of milking this whole thing for money and views, 
but then if I don't talk about it, I'm called a murderer and all these other things. So the truth is the Vice documentary is not it's not that bad. It like they they get they get the narrative and and the timestamps right. I really really don't appreciate them pulling out certain bits in order to sensationalize it, like my smirking and my smiling. I get it. It makes me look a certain way, but that's not what I intended. I, 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 yeah, I don't, I don't like. That's a nervous tick, and they're just perpetuating this narrative that I am a psychopath that does not care about anyone, and that is so far from the truth, and... Like it's always, it's always just a pity party. Like everyone is just like, oh, it's it's just a, oh, Richie's always just doing, just doing the pity party, and I, all the other drama. It's always nuanced. Like I'm, I'm wrong in a lot, in a lot of it, or I can get really petty or really shitty, but with this one, I just. I think about it every single day. Like there's not a single day that I don't at least sort of run through the scenarios of like, what could I have done differently in this situation? When Arlene and I spoke for that 45 minutes, the bulk of it was her proposing a collaboration in the style of Onision, the way we would go back and forth back in the day. We'd get hundreds of thousands of views just shitting on each other. And she said, I could be this crazy fan character and you could like defend yourself and it could be a whole thing. And like, what do you think? And I told her that I wasn't comfortable with it. I, I, I mean, I was, I mean, I was standing in my front yard with this person I didn't know. And honestly, the fact that she was proposing all of this and acknowledging how crazy it all was and that she is being this crazy person and that she's at least self-aware. Like her self-awareness put me at ease a little bit because up until that point, I didn't know if I was safe or not. And that's the biggest part that everyone overlooks because they want to hate me so badly that they forget that I am also a human and I was put in a very odd situation, joke or not. And I think that anyone with any common sense can view that clip of me supposedly making the challenge. If you make it out here, I will congratulate you and give you a glass of milk. And I, 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 I don't think you can tell me with a straight face that that was serious. I just don't. I don't believe that. And I think people telling me that I meant it as a serious challenge are just playing politics. And somebody is dead. And this whole story feels so gross because Arlene was a person. I didn't know her besides the 45 minutes I spent with her. And she really resonated with my content, but she was in her thirties. She had lived a life before me. She lived nine months after me, her family, people close to her told me directly and in YouTube comments, which Vice conveniently cut this part way down, they told me that I had little to no influence on the incident. And obviously they can't speak on her behalf, nobody can. But I'm more inclined to believe that her life was difficult and complicated and judging by the media that she left behind, she was interested in a lot of different YouTubers. Unfortunately, she only showed up to my house, but she had a behavior of doing that to online personalities. And it's clear that she had a lot of demons and pushing this narrative that it's all my fault and it's all on me is, it's not fair, it's not okay. It's turning Arlene into a two-dimensional character it's turning me into a two-dimensional villain, and I'm tired of it. I get it. I'm an internet personality, and people like to hate me, and I've justified some of that hate. But this specific instance, this thing, is 
so sad. And the reason why I'm so detached from it is because people constantly are demanding apologies or trying to defend myself for things that didn't happen, like people saying that I bullied her into submission or that there was, there was malicious intent involved. And from my perspective, if this is all just about a glass of milk, I think we're all living in a fever dream. It, it was never about the glass of milk. That's ridiculous. I still spent time with her. I literally gave her the light of day. Like, literally. I sat out there. I listened to her. She talked about her mental health, which I understood because I advocate for that and, and trying to understand it. And I didn't want to indulge her in making her think that a collaboration was possible because ultimately this behavior is not okay. And she acknowledged that it wasn't okay. She said it was the craziest thing she's ever done. And people linking the two together when she died a full nine months after that is just... Everybody likes to view life like it's a movie. Like this happened, then this happened, and then that happened. When really, life is mostly just a series of random events and we try to make sense of it, but it is so chaotic and scary and hard to navigate through. And a lot can happen in nine months. I'm gonna have to live with this for the rest of my life. I'm gonna have to carry this. Constantly thinking what else I could have done in that situation that maybe I could have skewed it a different way and maybe she wouldn't have killed herself. But I don't think that's possible. From all the information that I've been given, my interaction with her, I don't think I could have done anything differently in that scenario when she showed up. And at no point in that challenge, whether real, sarcastic, fake, whatever, did I imply that I was going to let the person inside my house. So everyone dogging me on this, is it, is it that I didn't give her the glass of milk? Because the video I made the day after was totally reasonable. I, I purposefully, Jacqueline and I purposefully, she was in the video, purposefully made sure to not put her name in the video because I didn't want her to get bullied. While I did feel incredibly bad for Arlene when she was sad and when she was crying in her vlog after we had talked, that was very hard to watch. I just feel like it's never enough. And that comes off as contempt towards my fans. And when the days come to where if somebody shows up to your doorstep and, they're, and they've bought your merch, you have to let them inside because they bought your merch because they're a fan of yours. You have to. You have to compromise your safety. You have to do stupid shit because they're your fans and how dare I, I will never subscribe to that. And if that makes me an asshole, I'm sorry. I won't do it. I'm sad that I'm a part of this and that the narrative will remain that I was responsible for this poor girl's death. It feels inappropriate to thank my patrons now like I do at the end of every video, but I do want to make a note that in the past few years, since those incidents, Everybody has been much kinder to me, and I've taken measures to be more responsible with what I say in regards to fan activity. And while I'll always be sarcastic, I will always be joking about things that are morbid. I don't want terrible situations like this to make me afraid to say what I'd like to say, but at the same time, I am much more careful now, and I hope something like this never, ever happens again. And there's nothing more to say about this. People can rag on me all they want, but I know who I am, and I know what happened, and that's it.